marketing at Comport Technology Solutions. Thanks for joining us. Today, you will be hearing from industry experts on how cyber AI revolutionizes immunity to cloud threats. So before I introduce our speakers, a couple of items. We will take questions at the end of the webinar. Please use the chat feature for this. Also, this webinar is being recorded and everyone will be supplied with a copy as soon as it becomes available. Now let's meet our speakers. As Chief Technology Officer, Eric Krucker drives the Comfort Technology Strategy, evaluating new and innovative solutions. He also consults with customers to help them determine how they can implement these solutions and use IT to drive their strategic business goals. Eric holds a Bachelor of Science degree from Fordham University in Management Information Systems and Communication. Our second speaker, Nabil Jalali, specializes in the application of cloud technologies and works closely with Dark Trace's research and development team. He advises strategic Fortune 500 customers across North America on advanced threat detection, cyber AI, and autonomous response for cloud and SaaS environments. He holds a bachelor's degree in electrical and electronic engineering from McGill University. Okay, let's get started. Eric, take it away. So thank you, Susan. I appreciate that. If you could advance to the uh, the next slide, please. So who? So I'm just going to give a little bit of background on who Comport is and what we do. Uh, so Comport is an enterprise IT consulting company, and we're focused in on helping our customers enable their strategic business objectives through IT. And within Comport, we have three main brands uh, under our umbrella. We have Comport Technology Solutions where we help our customers with data center solutions, uh, networking and security, enterprise mobility, end user computing, and digital business transformation. From a vertical perspective, we have Comport Healthcare Solutions, and we help our customers uh, deploy solutions for things like their wireless, uh, where a lot of customers have uh, sprawling campuses and they have to try to figure out how to get their customers connected or their patients connected to their network. Uh, things like their electronic medical record system, uh, medical images, uh, their VDI deployments, and patient engagement. So how do patients stay engaged with their doctor after they leave their primary care facility? And then finally, we have Comport Secure, which is our cloud solutions brand. And we help customers with both public cloud and hybrid cloud solutions, uh, providing managed services and hosted services for things like uh, uh, infrastructure as a service, disaster recovery as a service, and backup as a service. So next plot, side, next slide, please, Susan. Uh, as I said, we're we're a an enterprise IT consulting company. We have over 30 years of of deep engineering and solutions design experience, and we we help our customers with uh, their their solutions that they're trying to deploy for on premise things like their private cloud initiative, uh, what they're doing in their branch offices and how they connect end users, uh, things like their mobility solutions, and then all the way out to their public cloud and how they how they connect those things together to create their hybrid hybrid cloud solution and how they connect their, their end users to their catalog of services that they provide. Uh, and the way that we do this is we take a consultative approach and we'll assess their environment, what it looks like today, uh, and then we'll we'll create a, a design based upon what their end state is, and then we'll help them implement their vision, whether it's you know on their own, uh, they want to they want to take take the lead on that, or they want us to take the lead on that uh, through our professional and managed services, or some combination of the two, and then we'll help them operate and maintain that environment. Again, whether they want to do that on their own, whether they want to leverage our services, or they want some combination of the two. Next slide, please. So one of the big, one of the big uh, um, trends that we're seeing in networking today is uh, the concept of what a network is and where a network is, and, and how IT is dealing with that. So uh, you know things like the work from home that that a lot of people are dealing with right now are pushing the boundaries of of, of what and where a network is. And how, do, how does IT deal with securing that network, uh, 
how do they deal with optimizing that network so that you know they're they're not uh, that their budget isn't, isn't out of control and how do they stay in compliance uh, with corporate governance? Right? So things like you know we're working with a lot of customers on you know their VDI deployments and so how do they how do they deal with their network optimization and security when you know their applications are no longer sitting right next to where their VDI deployment is? So they have some applications that are inside of their data center, some that are out in the public cloud, some that are SaaS applications. And again, one of the big things that we're seeing right now is that you know, we're pushing corporate networks or IT is pushing their corporate network out to their end user. So uh, we're, we're putting some solutions together where we're actually deploying equipment inside of end users' homes. So it's extending that corporate IT network out into people's homes so that they can easily connect back to their corporate uh, their corporate network to consume IT and services as if they were sitting inside their office. So how do you deal with, again, bandwidth issues and, and most of all security issues when you have that kind of deployment and, and your network is basically everywhere? And then one of the other biggest trends that we've seen you know, evolving over the last several years is the deployment of SaaS-based applications and things like Salesforce and Office 365. And a lot of the threats that, that we're seeing out there today are based upon these types of SaaS applications because they, they tend to be softer targets. So how do I get some threats into you know, a, 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 someone's email into, you know, the, to expose their SharePoint or their OneDrive and things like that? And that's why we've partnered with Darktrace to deal with those emerging threats and the new types of threats that are out there. So with that, I'll hand it over to Nabil, and he's gonna talk about how Darktrace is dealing with emerging threats. Thanks for that, Eric. Um, I guess just to start off, I wanted to talk a little bit about the different types of challenges we're seeing, especially around customers' use of cloud and SaaS technologies. I think if you actually look at these threats, um, and I believe they're on the previous slide, we might've jumped ahead two slides there by mistake. Um, but in terms of the tr threats we see, I think the biggest, challenge oftentimes for security teams is the traditional security approach people have for on-prem defense doesn't really apply one for one when you do your transition or move to whether it's virtualization, you know, private cloud, public cloud, or the use of SaaS applications. And there are a few things that fall or roll up under this. One is the fact that there's a lot of complexity around cloud and SaaS deployments. Uh, this complexity can oftentimes be a little daunting I, I know oftentimes, you know, the, the traditional um, intelligence or wisdom that's gained over the years with on-premise networks doesn't necessarily apply or map one-to-one -to, -one to the cloud. And these challenges are actually, you know, pretty big in nature. You know, first and foremost, I find visibility and control to be quite challenging. Uh, it's already difficult as it is for customers to know what's going on in their environments. Um, when you start using the cloud and SaaS applications, now the challenge really shifts a bit in the sense that it's almost impossible to know exactly what's going on all the time in all of your cloud and SaaS environments. And that's just by nature of what, this, what the cloud empowers people to do, right? It empowers people to spin up compute instances in real time and use them on an as need basis. So when your network and your environment is changing so incredibly dynamically and fast, the challenge of visibility and control becomes amplified. Another thing we find oftentimes is that there's a lot of fragmentation in businesses. And this is especially true when you look at SaaS applications. I oftentimes, you know, I hear from CISOs and CIOs that they have corporate mandates for certain SaaS applications that are approved. But oftentimes, if you have someone in the marketing department that needs to get out a presentation for tomorrow morning and the current SaaS applications that they're using for that are just not cutting it, what they'll oftentimes do is that they'll just go online, find their favorite application to use for that purpose, and they'll pay whatever the fee is, whether it's you know 10 bucks a month or 20 bucks a month, and they'll essentially just use that specific SaaS application, not realizing that they're exposing corporate information to unsanctioned applications. And I think that also brings up another point, which is insider threat, right? Insider threat becomes such a bigger risk because insider threat, oftentimes you could think of it as, you know, insiders that are intentionally imposing threat or risk to the organization. And there's also insider threats that are really, um, you know, un unbeknownst to the insider themselves. They don't know what they're doing. It's just a matter of a mistake or an innocent mishap. And what we find oftentimes is 
regardless which camp it belongs to, this could be a very, very big challenge. And to this, you add, you know, additional layers of complexity, things like identity access management, things like misconfigurations that are very easy for attackers to leverage. And I'll be going over a few case studies later on where we see attackers automatically taking advantage of this. They actually have written scripts to specifically pinpoint and find misconfigurations that are popular across many different cloud or SaaS environments. When you look at these challenges, um, it kind of begs the question of, well, what are, what are security vendors out there doing? Right? What are the solutions to these challenges? And what we find oftentimes is a lot of the solutions we see out there, um, they're very much point solutions. Right? They, they look at a specific uh, challenge or they'll look at you know, three main problems that are popular in this space and say, we're going to address them in these ways. And the issue with point solutions is oftentimes they lack context and they're not holistic in nature. And while this sounds like a pretty high level or a high level statement, it's pretty applicable all the way down to the security analysts that use these solutions. If you have a solution that is very focused on identity access management, when you get an alert, it doesn't come with much context in terms of what happened before the incident, what happened after, and security analysts are left to actually stitch together that story. And you know, this is something that we oftentimes refer to as toil, right? This is just toil. It's, it's grunt work that security analysts have to do stitching together fragmented alerts and trying to put together a whole story. And this takes a lot of time. And one of the challenges, especially with cloud, is that things happen so incredibly fast that you know, taking this approach of trying to have a human put together a holistic story, and that might take them a couple of hours, whereas the attacker might be moving on a time scale of seconds. It doesn't really match up that well. What we also see is attacks are able to actually spread now across your entire digital infrastructure, right? So whether an attacker starts with SharePoint downloading files to a local machine and then moves them to a file share that it can then use um, you know, a certain protocol or port to exfiltrate out of the network, right? You look at examples like that and there's the use of SaaS, there's the use of private cloud, there's the use of uh, data center servers. These attacks are vast and they're speedy. So what we have to do is you have to make sure the security that tries to address these challenges can essentially act on that same level. Uh, next slide, please. And this is really where Darktrace has actually invented the immune system approach, and it's one that's more applicable now than ever before. If you think of your human immune system, it's a perfect analogy. What you have is every human is born with a unique system, right? Their, their unique DNA. And your immune system, what it does is that it doesn't download a list of all the malicious bad things out there and um, try some pattern match, and then once it finds a match, do something about it. What your immune system does is that it learns at a very, very granular level, what does your DNA look like? What is you know, your sense of self or being, right? And, and what does Eric's DNA look like and how is that unique to Eric versus what does Nabil's DNA look like and how is that unique to Nabil? And when you take this approach to really, really learning at the most granular level what an organization's digital fingerprint looks like, what do they do? What services do they use? What users are using those services? How much, how often, what ports, what protocols? What you're able to do then is detect and respond to anything that's outside of that norm. And this is a, really the approach that I find has really lended itself well to a lot of customers across you know, the globe is one that we look at the security challenge not as a way of specifically pattern matching or using all the most advanced threat intelligence out there, there are many solutions that already do that. The challenge is when things get left behind or bypass those security measures, how do you detect them then and there? And that's what our immune system does day in and day out for billions of people across the world. And that's essentially what Darktrace has created. If you can go to the next slide, please. Um, and, and when you talk about you know, an immune system approach, if you think about it, your immune system doesn't just look at your liver and then ignore the rest of your body. It doesn't just look at a fever and then say, okay, we'll deal with this now. And, you know, irrespective of what caused that, you know, viral infection or uh, bacteria that entered your body, your immune system actually takes a, a, a correlated holistic approach to anything that targets your body. And that's essentially where Dark has created a cyber AI platform where we have two essentially AI engines that work hand in hand. One works for the detection of anomalies, things that don't belong, things that just don't fit based on 
the bespoke understanding of what a network or what an organization's digital environment looks like. And the other AI engine essentially is taking decisions and action in real time to figure out, given what we've seen, how do we respond to this? And what's incredible is that when I started Darktrace over four years ago, we used to focus predominantly on network behaviors. But what we found is that our approach lends itself well across the entire digital estate, where we can monitor not only your physical network, but also understand what's happening in your cloud environment, what's happening with SaaS applications, what do email behaviors look like? And then we essentially create an understanding of the entire ecosystem where we could correlate and correspond events happening in network. How do they uh, bode and how do they fare with things happening in the cloud, SaaS applications, email? And this is really required. I mean, if you think about email just on its own for a second, you have the users that access your email inboxes and all that information is logged via API right, on the actual Office 365 SaaS application. And then you have the actual emails flowing in and out. And the reason I bring this up is, if you have something like compromised credentials, that actually shows itself on the SaaS front of Office 365 usage, as opposed to in the actual email files themselves, right? So it's really important to understand that if you can't create a holistic understanding of everything that's going on, then that's just creating a massive amount of overhead for security teams when they're against the clock trying to find out what's going on. Uh, this next slide actually will, will, will give a pretty nice representation of this. Um, so if you go to, to this slide here, you can actually see Darkspace's deployment can actually be spread absolutely wherever our customer's data goes, whether that's purely cloud-based, whether that's SaaS-based. And, and the cloud and SaaS piece are very important to me personally. I find that this idea of detection and response is critical when customers are doing their digital transformation journeys. Because what we found in some of the case studies I'll get into in a few slides is that when an attacker gets a hold of compromised credentials, they're not going to sit there for a week and scan your AWS environment. That's not gonna happen. What they're gonna do is that they're gonna log in using those credentials and they're gonna cause maximum damage within seconds. So what's important there to understand is there's a lot of tools, best practices, frameworks for how to secure these environments such that you deter attackers from getting in in the first place. But what I like to always remind customers is that you also have to keep in mind what happens when they do get in those environments. And this is really important. I find oftentimes I'll talk you know, at various conferences or with customers and the first question I'll ask is, do people actually have a sense that they're ultimately secure? That there's absolutely nothing that's gonna attack them or get in the way of their security strategy? And never have I gotten a customer say, yes, absolutely, without the shadow of a doubt, I'm entirely secure, which in a sense admits to the fact that we are expecting attackers to get in. It's a matter of if, not when. And what's interesting to understand is with cloud and SaaS applications, the progression of attacks is incredibly fast. And that's why not only detection is important once they bypass security measures, but also response as well. Um, if, we go to, if we can go to the next slide, I'll actually cover some examples of this. Um, with regards to cloud infrastructure specifically, we can actually monitor all sorts of cloud environments. Uh, our software is cloud native, so it can you know, run and monitor whether you're in GCP, AWS, Azure. Um, what's also interesting is that we've recently added coverage for containerized services as well. So if you're running serverless like uh, Kubernetes or Docker or even Fargate on AWS, and we're actually analyzing everything going on using that infrastructure in real time, and we're actually able not only to detect, but also to respond as well. We are, these are things like maybe someone gets uh, access to access keys and secret key IDs um, from around the world, not part of your organization. The attacker logs in and tries to maybe, you know, in, 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 initiate a fleet of instances to mine cryptocurrency for themselves. The, the software is actually able to detect that and to respond in real time. And there's a whole wide variety of things like that, that we could um, catch as well. But what's really interesting is that not only do we catch it on the IaaS side, but we'll actually also monitor SaaS applications as well. Things like SaaS usage, whether that's Office 365, Salesforce, Dropbox, we actually monitor those APIs and we're able to detect 
if you have behavior that looks like compromised credentials, where maybe someone from a country that's never accessed any of your applications is guessing, comp is guessing credentials that continuously fail. Or whether you have someone that you recently let go from your IT team, all of a sudden they go on SharePoint and they start downloading a ton of files to take with them to their next job. These are the types of behaviors where when these things happen, detection and response are critical. And then if we can go to the next slide, one, one aspect that Darktrace created, um, and it's been um, almost two years now that we've had this out on the market, is our email security. Email security is actually really interesting. When, when you look at you know, your traditional email security tools, oftentimes the legacy approach has been to look at email in complete isolation. But what's interesting and what we found at Darktrace is when you could look at people's email and then add context to it, which is not solely seen in, in the email sense of the word, but things like what's going on in the network. Did the user actually click on the link? After they clicked on the link, what happened in the network? Did they accidentally download an executable file? And not only being able to understand users' behaviors in the inbox, but also understand how does that correlate with the rest of what's going on across your entire environment. What we found is we're actually able to catch things that very frequently go undetected. Um, and there are the things that, you know, the actions or the responses that you're used to seeing, things like unspoofing emails, uh, locking links, holding back messages. But we're actually also able to detect things that are incredibly difficult to do. Our, our email security actually will run sentiment analysis to understand what is the tone of an email? Does it match based on what the users historically said? in their communications? Does it make sense given the conversation? Um, and things like that are really interesting because we've actually seen a lot of cases before where uh, an attacker will not compromise necessarily one of our customers, but compromise one of the partners they work with, a third party. And let's say that you get services from said third party and then all of a sudden you have to make a payment transaction to that third party. If that third party's email is compromised, an attacker can actually jump into the middle of the communication there and say, yep, please direct the payment to my personal bank account. There's no attachment in such an email. There's no link. There's no tangible malicious identifier. And that's something that we've seen really show value is our, able, uh, our ability to run that type of sentiment analysis really allows us to not only capture that, but hold it back with relative confidence. So having said that, I just wanted to cover some, some key case studies. I know oftentimes customers ask, you know, using this approach, what are some of the things you see that oftentimes go missed? So if you go to the next slide, I'll actually cover um, one of the really popular ones, and that's data theft. When you look at the cloud, um, you know, whether you're looking at it, at it and you're, you know, analyzing your security posture or you're looking at it and you're saying, you know, we already have a form of, you know, data loss protection already in place. What I oftentimes hear customers say is that if you look at a, a data loss protection type solution, it's actually doing content analysis. It's analyzing the contents of files and it's essentially pattern matching, right? If a certain word um, or key is met in a file, it'll kick in and it'll try to stop that. But what happens when you have an insider threat? Someone that already has access to files, someone that naturally and historically has been able to not only look at them, but also to download them and to manipulate them and to change them. And this is where we see a behavioral approach really shine. And this example I wanted to give was, we actually saw a case where uh, there was a bit of a reorganization with one of our customers and they had to let go of a, few very, uh, of a few different employees, one of them being a member of the IT team. Um, essentially what the IT manager did before he left the office was he actually was able to go on um, their cloud hosted um, service and download a large list of not just customers, but also um, pricing documentation, right? Um, and this is something that the IT manager would normally have access to, right? There's nothing that stops him from accessing that. Uh, were he to be in good standing working at the organization, it would be very logical and credible for him to be using those types of files for various reasons. But in this particular case, a large data dump, um, one that's uncorrelated in nature and really unseen, is something that actually ticked off Dark traces cyber AI technology to say, wait, 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 this does not look normal. This person never downloads this many files. They actually don't often go to this folder path ever at all. 
And for this employee to be doing this, this makes absolutely no sense. And being able to detect that, not based off of any specific type of match, but more so purely behavioralistically, right? We've been understanding this IT manager and every other employee user's behavior on the SaaS application. So we're able to detect what they're expected to do. And when they deviate from that expected behavior, we're able to flag that and say, this does not belong. Uh, this next slide is actually um, a, a case study that's um, more so about misconfiguration. I find oftentimes uh, something that a lot of cloud vendors emphasize is misconfigurations. And misconfigurations can be absolutely detrimental because what we're seeing is attackers can take advantage of this within seconds. Um, in this specific example, what we actually saw was um, someone had actually mistakenly configured a number of VMs in the cloud to be exposed to the internet when they were supposed to be only exposed privately to the organization. And what was interesting is as soon as people started hammering on these virtual machines publicly from around the world, not only did Darktrace detect that, but it actually responded within seconds and actually prevented anyone externally to connect to this VM. But what I want to talk about is really what this journey looks like for a customer, right? Because I was actually personally involved in this case. And what had happened was um, the customer had actually very specifically directed um, the, the cloud provider that they were using at the time to only expose their machines internally. And what's interesting is that the, the cloud service provider they were using said, yep, no problem, it's done, right? Who's gonna go back and double check that work? And how often do we do that? And do we do that for every single machine that we spin up in the cloud? These are some very obvious questions, but they're ones that are really important to ask. In this specific case, when I actually approached the customer and I said, look, there's a misconfiguration here that looks pretty severe and we're stopping it. You might want to revisit this. The customer actually came back to me and they said, that's not possible. I have confirmation here from my cloud provider that this is an entirely privately exposed machine, right? And this is really the power of visibility and this behavioral approach is that it's not based on any type of config or any type of definition from a user. It's behaviorally learning what's normal. And there was only one machine that looks different than all the other ones. And the AI's ability to not only spot that, but to also take the relevant action, relevant and proportionate action to, to stop any type of incident, to kind of snowballing into chaos was really important here. And then the last example I wanted to talk about on the next slide is one that's specifically email related. Um, what we actually see is oftentimes, um, as I mentioned earlier, attackers, not only you know, look at specific organizations to attack their mailboxes or to get into their networks, but also what we find oftentimes is the opposite. You know, Attackers will try to work with third parties, companies that might put their guard down when it comes to security, and through that mechanism, through the supply chain kind of work their way. In this specific case, that wasn't um, essentially what happened. Here, someone was actually able to insert themselves, right? An attacker actually inserted themselves into a genuine conversation that a CFO is having to essentially divert uh, a bonus payment um, to an account that did not belong to the CFO. What's interesting in this case is that, as I'm sure many on this call are aware, phishing emails are getting really good. And I mean really good. And what we're actually starting to see is there's actually open source tools out there that leverage AI for the attackers. One, one such tool that I know of is a, is a tool called snap underscore R. Uh, this is actually a uh, publicly available tool. You can actually go look it up. And what it'll do is you could actually point it towards a Twitter user and it will go through all their Twitter history, understand what they tweet at, what, what subjects are topical to them. And then it'll start sending out custom phishing tweets, right? Uh, and from that perspective, it's going to become very difficult for humans to discern the differences here. And that's why I wanted to bring this case up is what we find is these phishing attempts are getting so complex and, and, and really so accurate that you know humans are only gonna be able to sniff it out to a certain extent. And we really need to start leveraging AI to look you know, behind the scenes, behind the current, understand what are the intricacies? Does this make sense? Do the patterns make sense? Do the locations make sense? Do the timestamps make sense? The tone of voice based on what we've seen before. And that's really one of the key differentiators for Darktrace's email security is that we, we do that sentiment analysis. We're learning 
the behavior of every inbox and what's normal for it, mapping it out, and then we're able to contextually understand what email threats belong, which ones don't. And we've actually recently published a blog post highlighting some of the really interesting fearware campaigns we've been seeing, especially related to COVID-19. I think the latest step that I've seen is there's over 130,000 COVID-related domains that have been spun up um, in, in recent history. Now, obviously, some of those are going to be legitimate. But what's interesting is that it goes to kind of show the scale of what's going on out there in the world. Uh, so with that, Eric, I guess I'll pass it right back over to you. Yeah, thank you very much, Nabil. I appreciate that. That's uh, it's very insightful uh, and, and definitely a different approach than than almost everybody else in the market is taking as far as security and, and threat detection and management. Uh, you know, the the one last thing I wanted to to just cover really quickly here was sort of the the breadth and depth of of what we do from a services perspective in networking and security and enterprise infrastructure. So so these are some of our partnerships. These are not all of our partnerships. Some of the important ones, uh, as in Darktrace, obviously, uh, Aruba, Cisco, Fortinet, Arista, Palo Alto, uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprise, you know, VMware, the cloud providers in AWS and Azure, um, and some of our backup providers like like Veeam um, and and Splunk is, you know, these these are all folks who uh, we provide a lot of services for, and we provide a lot of solutions to our customers. And, uh, you know, I guess, as I said, I just wanted to kind of showcase what it is that we do um, to provide our, our, our customers with value. The last thing I want to I want to talk about here, the last thing I want to do is the proof of value. So we'd like to move to a proof of value because, uh, you know, we can really showcase the, the great capabilities and the abilities of, of the Darktrace platform and what it can do. We can put uh, for free a 30 day proof of value on site. We will we, we help size it and deploy it um, along with Darktrace. And, and we, we put it on site in a strategically placed uh, area within your network where we think it'll, it'll provide the maximum impact and value to the organization and, and really kind of capture all, all the, the, uh, the traffic that's coming into the network that really needs to be analyzed or coming in and going out. So, um, so if you'd like to, to sign up for you know, a 30-day proof of value, please send me an email. Uh, this is this is my corporate email, and uh, I will get back to you uh, right away. So with that, I think we're going to take a couple questions. Uh, Susan, do we have some some questions out there that we we want to uh, we want to field at this point? Yes. Uh, the first question is, what are the top priorities you hear from CISOs, and what are some innovations in the AI cybersecurity space you find significant and noteworthy? Yeah, Nabil, you want to uh, you want to field that one? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's actually a really good question, and I find that something that was shocking to me is when Darktrace was initially launching its email security specifically um, in the context of our entire platform. I actually started doing some digging into what are other email security providers doing in the sense of understanding, you know, context. How, how are they understanding context? How do they understand what's going on in the network? Um, and how do they correlate the two? And what was really shocking to me was that there has actually never been a network aware email security solution. And that to me is absolutely bananas because if you think about it, the, the email is the first vector and the biggest vector for attackers to get into your network, right? Uh, attackers aren't looking to get in your email and just sit in your email for extended periods of time oftentimes there's always a network component to it. And what I found is that by Darktrace actually releasing our email security module based on the same principles of AI, um, we've had tremendous success. And you know, I guess just to share some numbers with you all, I remember when we first launched our beta program, uh, we actually made our, our email security available to 12 different customers we were trialing with at the time. And 10 of the 12 actually purchased Darktrace's email security within 30 days of trying it. Um, and it was just really obvious to them from day one what it was catching, whether it was the spoofing, whether it was you know suspicious links, whether it was solicitation. Um, what we found, and really one of the main reasons, you know, to Eric's point, we provide you know an absolute free, no commitment ask trial of our technologies. We really stand by it, and we really find that leveraging AI not just as a 
afterthought or as a tack on, but really is what our company has been based on has been something that significantly allowed us to show capabilities that CISOs have been waiting for for years. And you know, to the, to the second part of the question that asked about significant developments, uh, one thing I didn't want to highlight is uh, over the last four years or so at Darktrace, we actually have been undertaking a bit of a research project internally in our labs. Um, and what we set out to do is essentially understand, can we actually offload any of the heavy lifting that humans do when it comes to actual triage of threats and actually hand that off to AI? And you know what we essentially did is that with the consent of our SOC team, we've actually asked to monitor how they use Darktrace for our customers. How do they, you know, what, what what do they click on? How do they use the various features and tools that are available there? And over the years, we've essentially built out this massive data lake that we then applied machine learning to to figure out how do they investigate. And what we were actually able to release at Black Hat last year was what we call the cyber AI analyst. And essentially what it is that with a click of a button, our platform is continuously investigating the threats it generates itself. And it's able to stitch together, you know, different phases of an entire attack. And what was really interesting was we actually recently detected um, a very interesting uh, attack that was being run by uh, APT41. Um, they're, they're very advanced nation state group uh, based in China. And we actually published a blog post about this on our website that talks through what exactly our cyber AI analyst was able to detect and to investigate with absolutely no human intervention. And I think that's definitely one of the things that CISOs are always asking about. You know, I, I, I'm almost getting tired of the number of times people bring up the skills shortage or the fact that there just aren't enough hands and eyes to go around to, you know, understand an entire network and to not only detect things, but to also investigate them. And I think that's definitely another place where we see AI definitely play a major role. Great. Um, the second question I see here is uh, Dark Trace created this new category called autonomous response. If that takes trust for a CIO to think about allowing machine learning to take an action, what are the barriers for customers? Yeah, absolutely. Um, that, that's actually another really good point. You know, I think if you think back to the IPS days, you know, people really weren't too into it. And, and usually the consensus that we oftentimes got was, you know, they, they, they just take such harsh action that, you know, customers are very reluctant to actually put them, you know, fully, you know, let, let them run in the wild and, you know, for obvious reason. What we found at Darkface is when we created our autonomous response category, you know, the building trust with customers is a very important part of the process. And because of that, what we've done is we've actually staggered the stages through which you can fully automate our um, anti-gena features. So to start with, we can actually put uh, our autonomous response in human confirmation mode. And essentially what that does is that it lets the end user know. It tells them, hey, I'm planning to take this action. Is this okay with you or not? And the user essentially says yes or no. And what we found is over time, the user, you know, will essentially get to a point where they just keep approving and approving and approving. It's just kind of a repetitive motion of yes, 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 yes. So over time, they kind of build that trust and they say, you know what, enough is enough. We don't need to kind of keep saying yes to these. Let it detect and defend, or autonomously respond to what it's finding. One thing to note that's important with regards to autonomous response is there is a variety of different angles through which you could look at it. Um, one is there are very advanced companies with very, very mature security programs that can look at their networks and say, this is the area of my network when I want to deploy Darktrace. I want autonomous response specifically for these types of behaviors, specifically for external attack, specifically for compliance, because these are things that the, you know, internally our organization knows about. They know not to do. They know better. So if you find them, you can absolutely go and autonomously respond. And you know, for other customers, they actually will use it for a very specific use case, or they'll actually use it for nights and weekends, where they'll say during the day, the dark trace will not run wild and free. It will require a human to approve it. But after hours and on weekends, we'll actually let dark traces AI autonomously respond to what it finds so that no one has to necessarily 
you know, work over the weekend or come online at two in the morning. And that we found is of immense value. I think globally right now, over a third of Darktrace customers actually take advantage of our autonomous response. Great, thanks. Um, I think we are actually running to the end of our time here today. Um, I'd like to thank both Eric and Nabil for uh, speaking today. If anybody has any further questions that we did not get to, um, Eric, if you don't mind fielding them um, where we, at your email address so that everybody um, has a chance to get their questions answered, or at least you know we can pass them around. Absolutely, Susan, no problem. And Great. Thank you, and thank you, Nabil. Yeah, my pleasure, Eric. Thank you very much for putting this on. Thank you so much, everybody.